Hello and welcome back to the MMA bar. Today we're going to discuss the story of Juliana Pena. What got her into MMA, her fight highlights, and the story of her victory over Amanda Nunes to become the bantamweight champion of the UFC. Spoken native Juliana Pena rocked the world when she defeated Amanda Nunes last month to become the UFC women's bantamweight world champion. Juliana Pena is the symbolism of bravery and heart, and her win over Amanda Nunes made her the best women's bantamweight fighter in the UFC. Not only is she the women's bantamweight champion, but she was also the first woman in UFC's history to win the Ultimate Fighter. Currently sitting as the number 3 pound-for-pound -pound women's fighter in MMA, she has made her mark and will forever be remembered in the history books. Juliana Pena has had it rough throughout her journey to being the bantamweight champion, so let's discuss her story, her motivations, and her rise to the top. Juliana Nicole Pena was born on August 19, 1989. Born in Spokane, Washington, she was the youngest of four children born to Ernie and Pamela Pena. Pena has three siblings and is the sister of former KREM2 reporter and meteorologist Grace Pena. Although being of Mexican and Venezuelan descent, her nationality is American and her ethnicity is mixed. In order to lose weight and channel aggression in her early adulthood, she enrolled in a cardio kickboxing class and subsequently transitioned to mixed martial arts. After going 2-0 as an amateur, Pena made her professional MMA debut in May 2009. She won four consecutive fights but suffered her first defeat in April 2012 to future fellow TUF 18 cast member Sarah Morris in a 140-pound catchweight bout. Pena lost the fight due to an injury from an armbar which forced the doctor to stop the bout between the second and third rounds. The fight took place just two months and one week after Pena was involved in an accident with a drunk driver in which she was knocked unconscious and suffered a broken nose. Regardless, in August 2013, it was announced that Pena was one of the fighters selected to be on the Ultimate Fighter with Ronda Rousey and Meisha as coaches. Pena faced Gina Mazzani in the elimination fight to get into the house. She controlled the fight from early on, winning a clear unanimous decision victory after two rounds. In her second fight in TUF, she fought Shayna Bowsler. Pena was able to achieve back mount and won via rear naked choke for perhaps the biggest upset victory of the season. In the semi-finals, Pena faced off Sarah Morris. Although she already lost to Morris earlier in her career, this time Pena avenged a loss. Pena won the fight via guillotine choke in the second round to get the win. In the finals, Pena faced Jessica Ricochi at the Ultimate Fighter 18 finale. She won the bout via TKO in the final seconds of the first round and became TUF 18 Women's Bantamweight Champion, setting the record as the first women's TUF winner in UFC history. Pena was expected to face Jessica Andrade at UFC 171. However, Pena pulled out of the bout due to an injury to her right knee. She suffered the injury while grappling in training, ultimately damaging, among other parts, her ACL, MCL, LCL, CL and meniscus. This was a major blow to Pena's momentum and kept her out of action for the rest of 2014. Pena's return came in April of 2015 against Milana Dudieva at UFC Fight Night 63. She won the fight via TKO in the first round and due to how good she fought, the win also earned Pena her first Performance of the Night bonus award. Pena next faced former title challenger Jessica I the same year at UFC 192. She won the fight by unanimous decision. In her next fight, Juliana Pena took on another UFC legend when she faced Katsunganu at UFC 200. Continuing her impressive win streak, she won this fight by unanimous decision. Her first loss in the UFC would come when she fought the current best women's pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Valentina Shevchenko. She lost the fight via armbar submission in the second round. In October of 2017, Pena announced that she was pregnant and would be taking an indefinite hiatus from the sport. Nearly two and a half years from her last bout, she returned and faced former UFC women's flyweight champion Nico Montano. She won the fight via unanimous decision.
Although she lost her next fight against Jermaine Durandamy, a third-round submission victory over Sarah McMahon was enough to earn Juliana Pena her long-awaited title shot. Pena had been calling for a fight against Nunes since UFC 200. During the post-fight interviews, after both athletes won their matches on that card, Nunes said that Pena was her next fight. Despite the call-out, it took five years and several different opponents for the two to meet inside the octagon. Originally, the two were supposed to fight each other at UFC 265 in August, after Pena called out Nunes in January. But Nunes had to pull out after contracting COVID-19 and Pena implied that it was another excuse to duck her. Coming into this match, Pena was the underdog in a contest against the greatest women's fighter in the history of MMA, Amanda Nunes. However, Pena demonstrated exactly why she had been saying that she would make Nunes quit in the lead-up to the bantamweight title fight. She said she would go right at Nunes and she didn't go off the script in any way. Pena's words initially when she said this sounded like a big bluff, but her performance in the fight proved her right. Before the fight, Pena said, I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on me and they think that I'm a sacrificial lamp. But I think that I'm definitely not a sacrificial lamp. And everybody loves an underdog. So I'm just ready to get out there and bring something better to the table," she had said before the title fight. Amanda Nunes was the number one fighter in ESPN women's pound-for-pound -pound rankings and a winner of 12 straight fights in a run of success that extends as back as 2015. So it appeared as though she was unbeatable. After they touched gloves in their bout, the two athletes traded blows. The fight went to the ground with Nunes on top for the rest of the round. Nunes dominated and secured knockdowns, displaying the power disparity between the pair. Pena kept attacking, landing Nunes in a straight armbar. Recalling the event, Pena said, I was literally thinking in the first round. I can't believe I'm gonna have a win. First ever in UFC history by straight armbar, Pena said. I literally thought I was gonna get the first tap, first submission, straight armbar, and then that didn't happen. Not to be deterred, in the second round, Pena came out as a dominant force, striking Nunes repeatedly. Eventually, the flurry of fists was too much for the former champion to handle. Nunes is a knockout artist with tremendous stopping power and out of her 21 wins, 13 had come via vicious chaos. So it was more impressive that Pena had Nunes hurt on the feet. Pena has heavy hands and while not pretty or technical, her striking setups clinches and takedowns. On Saturday, however, she hurt Nunes with overhand rights and left hooks to the temple, staggering the Brazilian. Backed up against the cage and getting tagged repeatedly, Nunes went for a last-ditch grapple. Pena, realizing her opponent was exhausted, took Nunes down, scrambled to her back, and submitted Nunes via rear naked choke at 3 minutes 23 seconds of the second round. As it stands, Pena's upset win has thrown a spanner in the UFC's works. Had Nunes won, the promotion would have tried to set her up with Kayla Harrison, a two-time Olympic gold medalist in judo and an MMA champion with the Professional Fighters League. At the time of the fight, Kayla's contract with BFL was expired and UFC president Dana White confirmed that talks were ongoing with Harrison. A Kayla Harrison and Amanda Nunes fight was huge, White said at the post-fight presser. If they would have faced off, it would have been a massive mega million dollar fight. Let me tell you, if Amanda Nunes had won tonight, the Kayla Harrison fight would have been one of the biggest fights that you would have ever seen. Reacting to the situation, Pena said in an interview with Barstool Chicago, he's a little bit bummed that his little golden goose got tapped out. Of course, they're not thinking I have a chance and they want her to win because it looks better for the promotion. It looks better for the UFC. Pena continued. They weren't expecting me to win. I literally looked at them after the fight and all their jaws are on the floor. I was like, sorry to ruin your day, guys. Sorry, but what am I going to do? It's not anything that's rigged by any means, so it's up to the individual. Not surprisingly, White ordered an immediate rematch. 
Juliana Pena will defend her belt in a highly anticipated rematch against longtime title holder Amanda Nunes at UFC 277 on July 30 in Dallas, the promotion announced. Thank you for watching this video. That's all for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell.